Well, basically everyone knows what a plinth or molding is. It looks like that on the floor or on the ceiling. The task of the plinth is to cover a gap between a laminated board and the wall or a drywall and a ceiling. So despite the fact that the plinth has been a problem for many years to push furniture to the wall, we got used to it because there is, well, it ensures ideal abutment or jointing. But there is a 21st century technology that ensures 100 hundred percent abutment of the furniture to the wall you can put anything here from a poof to a cabinet and one of the best moscow architects is going to tell you i am dmitry prasolov and one of the best finishing expert from saint petersburg we're now at a showroom and i'm going to show you on a mock-up how that shady element works and we have a gr central groove for LED strip and how to install it on site. We are happy to see you on our YouTube channel. We are a platform for those builders who are the best of the best and who would like to share their experience. And there is a link to our catalog and core products. So if you have any questions, please download it. Have a nice watch. Hello. This is my house and I have an architect company and we have been designing houses for 13 years now so if you want go down to my description under the title so that house was built from scratch within 15 or 18 months and you can find more information under that video we are going to speak about a shady molding because this is a very relevant point for designers or customers why it has a few advantages not just um, because it looks beautiful and all walls and all ceilings are floating or suspended and the same is true with the shady plinth which is below so the floor goes directly under the wall all joints are concealed and you cannot see it from here any abutments any junctions um, are critical for designers because parkwood board or laminated board has a gap usually and between the wall but the shady uh, profile or plinth makes it possible to do uh, we can watch down like that but um, it's not necessary to do well what are its advantages it's it looks nice you can see how my corridor looks like it looks like a stretched ceiling because it's a trendy thing for um, for a good abutment but still the ceiling is looking like uh, a hovering one and has a good geometry because every designer or architect likes good geometrical shape and sometimes you can see some you know tile rectangular marble geometric figures made of tiles and that helps us to zone out certain areas and that ceiling makes a zone an aspect uh, but that we are speaking about beautification but i want to touch upon a technical issue as well because we are always fighting with builders how to make a junction of the ceiling and the wall looking good because no builder can make an ideal 90 percent angle because this is a plasterboard this is um, acrylic sealant some extension expansions or micro cracks you have to close it with uh, glass cloth or um, vasil whatever you never have an ideal abutment at 90 percent at 90 degree angle so there is always something uneven i mean the surface but this is not the case here because the ceiling ends um, how it ends and this is a black molding why it is called a shady molding it looks like a sh it's like a shade suspended in the air and this is a very good quality of it 
Now, we, uh, we are finding ourselves in a showroom and um, I'll, I'll show you how uh, shady uh, joints look like and what and why we need them. Today, we use a lot of drywall, but sometimes we have cracks because of uh, movements of the building and gypsum board um, elongates and becomes drier and uh, cracks generated. So basically there is a gap and the plinth makes it possible to cover that um, the plinth uh, covers that gap and this is a buffer molding for a ceiling so this is a good visual effect it looks nice but it resolves an issue because it is made up of three parts one part is fixed to the wall there is a buffer section and the uh, gypsum board fixture so that buffer compensates for all those elongations or extensions of the building and we can hide any you know linear things in it and the gypsum board is not deformed so we want to show that owing to our profile or molding uh, we can resolve all issues and this is a dynamic stand or a test bench we move every every uh, foot 10 centimeters every three seconds and uh, three days longer three days after you can see no deformation of the gypsum board many of our profiles are installed in moscow city skyscrapers and uh, uh, those skyscrapers have a lot of wind load but still the plaster boards are not deformed so we have uh, different profiles that mock-up is made up of uh, um, fixation to the wall but it's not the case in real life so it, it is uh, twice cheaper as the previous one and during installation as it is not fixed to the wall we have a technological junction box or the abutment to the wall and you can cover that gap and you will never see it in real life so i can show it to you in more detail on this part how it works it compensates for any linear or other movements and that side uh, has a junction with the wall and nothing happens to that ceiling. I am responsible for technical support at our company and I have noticed that there are many questions from Russian regions where installers are universal I would say because they do ceilings, they do um, electrical wiring as well and uh, they ask a lot of questions and due to their questions we have developed a new profile which is very easy to install and uh, mainly it takes into account all standard ceiling installation techniques we do it like that in two layers which is not possible to do in this profile because this uh, groove has a conflict with the guiding rail and we have to mount it on a two-layer framing without a guiding rail which is not clear to many universal installers and basically those prof two profiles are the same but this one is easier to install and uh, even a not very professional installer can use it well guys I would like to share one more thing with you because we can put it to the ends of the gypsum board and cut it but we would be able to see its edge but I decided to play with it and I have looped it it connects two sides of the wall and uh, the ceiling looks like a hovering or a floating one with a bonding so I like this uh, looped ceiling but let's get back to the plinth what are major advantages of that shady plinth or molding we don't see a gap between the floor and the wall second it does not offset or propagate so any builder cannot 
you know, commission the facility or a flat if there is no furniture in the room. Sometimes we have to wait for the furniture to be installed first and then we have to cut plinths. In this particular case, the plinth is already installed, the geometry is uh, painted and there are no abutments, there are no propagations and you can put anything from a poof or a sofa or a cabinet. So we have done the room geometry first and it's very convenient. Well, the logical end of the ceiling abutment topic was the uh, junction of the floor and we have developed two systems with and without lighting. This, um, this mock-up shows the um, shady plinth without LED lighting. So that's gonna be masked and uh, painted and um, I can show it in, in more detail on the drawing. There is a parkwood board on the, on, the, on the floor glued in and here inside we have used acrylic sealant and then it's not gonna be noticed. This is uh, an, a profile without lighting and we have an LED lighting profile where we can show the hovering effect. There is a special groove for LED strip and diffuser and uh, it's, it's pretty easy to install as the previous one. Speaking about plinths or moldings, a classical floor molding propagates from the wall and there are lots of modifications but as a rule we have a... F well, it has a problem to fit to the furniture so there are some issues related to that floor molding but there are alternatives like hidden plinth it looks like that but it has an internal part put in there if we compare them it is uh, more expensive and in a shady gap we offset all possible issues but in in that particular case it's more difficult to do they are good both for concealed doors, but a classical plinth is not good for concealed doors. Well, also the plinth does not offset or does not propagate and we can use hidden doors because 90% uh, of doors now are concealed framing uh, doors and for that door to fully open for more than 90 degrees there should be no plinths on the way. Well, there are solutions like 45 degree uh, plinths or whatever, but this is not good. And this solution makes it much better to look like and uh, it's a little bit dirty, but the external angle, even the external angle, it looks like a floating or hovering one. And the door opens 180 degrees and it has no barrier on obstacle and it can fully open. Well, this angle looks like that. This is a stucco and uh, this uh, is leveled out. So that plinth would fit into it. And that's gonna be it, exactly. What I recommend is to have panoplex on that place on top of the stack a little bit higher than this level. We made it a little, little bit higher because we don't know what's gonna be the shady shady plinth wanted by the customer, bigger or smaller, so we have selected it a little bit higher. That's why we have uh, made a channel bigger than expected and then we have uh, made this mark out of made of two guiding rails and this is the uh, width of our plinth and 0.3 millimeter for the glue. I took, um, well, I have two holes 6 millimeter each to regulate it and I got my uh, caliper gauge, set a certain 
uh, distance and I put it exactly along that line. After that I have doubled um, self-tapping screws who uh, fix it firmly and basically this is a good stencil or a good standard uh, tool so the painting work is good we had no problem with that as as you can see everything is leveled out and we have enough space prepared for our molding installation and how can we install it then we take an electronic uh, angle measurement measurer this is 90 degrees 93.6 degrees and we have all our pieces across the perimeter of that uh, section everything has been cut and we have uh, another section another room everything has been cut and prepared and now we have to glue in and it's good there's going to be no problem and that would simplify and um, uh, the installation process will be faster so those plinths will be there and that um, that that gap is going to be primed and uh, graded and then we can use a glass cloth and uh, it will it would be closed off we are using a liquid nails for installation like that we take the optimum craft pistol and we are making a line of the sealant so if this is a drywall we are using better liquid nails because they can stay longer and we need some more time and as the grading is uh, pretty flat we are using a laser device put it under the laser uh, move it back and forth and uh, that's it let's have another one not very intensively uh, but not very little too because afterwards it's gonna be uh, fixed with uniflot and this is not a big deal we need the initial fixation first bearing capacity as on a gypsum board is not required every time is gonna be um, adapted and then we start uh, putting it into place it's better to do it uh, together with someone else but I have no one with me that's why I'm doing that myself well before that we have we de-oiled our plinth So, we are now uh, meeting the visible parts to be flat using a laser device. There could be small gaps, but they would not be visible later. It's not a big deal. Well, it's, it will not be visible because it's uh, impossible to have an ideal junction. Well, the glue starts to um, to uh, to work to action. So we're um, we're fixing one part, adjusting another part, and as you can see, there is a little gap there, but uh, it's not a major problem. So we can use Uniflot on top and on the level on the grade, we can see that it's already. Uh, on on in plane and uh, it's pretty ideal we asked we asked painters will they need it yes they asked us the basic primer they would use uniflot and put a glass cloth 
on our plinth and then put a finished primer. Uh, but it's very thin, so they didn't want to adjust that plane and this way is quite sufficient. Well, this plinth has a LED strip uh, lighting because there is a groove uh, for an LED strip and this is just uh, a diffuser uh, not visible to have a maximum uh, light on the floor and we can have a warm light and when you are walking in the nighttime you don't have to switch uh, overhead light you can switch on that LED lighting only and that's very nice it's very convenient to walk around the floor around the house in the night time this is a must-have for every home why don't I have it because my house uh, is a designer one and I have a lot of lighting fixtures and that's gonna be too much of a good thing because uh, too much is not good many ask how to uh, clean the house because the gap is very small the answer is that um, the height is quite enough for a floor cloth or for a mop and even the robot vacuum would go there so it's not a problem to clean under that wall you can clean it pretty conveniently if you want to do it with your hand you can do it normally and when the house was commissioned when the finishing work has been done I asked cleaning ladies to uh, to clean that gap for me um, to remove some glue in operation it's pretty good but if you do it like that if you clean your home like that you can um, you can uh, make this uh, wall dirty because you can be careful you have to be careful with such walls i think you liked that video if you have any questions please uh, put your comments under the name of that video and i will answer them that mock-up is showing to you the difference between the gypsum board classical production and what has been done by us and why earlier we had to mill out our gypsum board to make an angle and um, the gap was at least 90 millimeters because we had to uh, uh, finish it off later on and uh, otherwise it uh, wouldn't 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 have been possible so in this case we uh, all all the grooves are already painted and it does not require any finishing later there is one nuance which is uh, installation and maintenance time if you make a, a plasterboard niche you need to spend a lot of time for making it for painting it and it it's very time consuming and you need a lot of place to mill it out to store it somewhere and to install but if you use this profile or this molding this is a off-the-shelf solution easy to install we have been thinking how to make that light to not highlight all possible cracks or issues on the wall uh, we wanted to have a clear lighting very soft and beautiful in terms of design at the moment out of the models that i saw on the market this uh, shelf is uh, where the led strip is located at it um, well lights down exactly showing all the cracks and the painters have to make it ideal but we were trying to use or to take into account all those um, all those things so we have made a few deflectors in order to uh, diffuse light softly to not see those pixels that are available on an LED strip but not all designers like that 
niche, which is 25 millimeter wide. Sometimes they want to make it wider. And there is a system of this so-called offset installation. We have an extra layer of gypsum board and you can offset it at any distance from the wall. To summarize, this is not us who invented that. This is a modern designer solution. A trendy thing from customers and designers. We're using tracking and concealed ventilators, concealed junctions for floor and ceiling, concealed doors, and that solution fits pretty good into the existing design.